Hi there. Thanks for joining us for Together. I'm Karen Lee. Well, I hope you're ready for some good news because that's all we share on this show. There is so much goodness going on that it's hard for us to decide what to share with you. But we tried our best today, so sit back, relax, and get ready to feel inspired. Last year on the show, I introduced you to a young girl who was in the middle of liver failure. It was such a rare disease, no one knew what her future looked like. But then a stranger came forward with an incredible gift, and Karen Morfitt shares it with us. Nurses save lives every day, but this nurse did a whole lot more. It's just what you do. She gave life, a part of her liver, to a young girl she barely knew. How both of their lives changed following the donation. That's next on Together. Well, one 17-year-old high school student has been doing more than studying for his college entrance exams. He's also been studying to get his pilot's license. As Tori Mason explains, his dream of flying is really taking off. I took an introduction to aviation class. Now, Drake Robichaux has his head in the clouds. It's freeing almost. It lets you kind of get away from the troubles of life on the ground. At only 17, he's a licensed pilot. While it may be a lot of work, it does pay off in the end. It, it really does. We'll tell you about the organizations coming together to help students like Drake take to the skies. That's later on Together. Well, for many of us, hands-on experience is priceless. Getting out of the classroom is crucial to learning. At DPS, one school is doing that. The Career Education Center is all about teaching life skills. Dominic Garcia takes us there. Sometimes, all it takes is the right teacher to transform a student. Awesome. For Lily Cannon, that teacher is Chef Rivera. I approached teaching Lily like I would anybody. Through this class, the two have formed a special bond. Cooking is one of those things that just transcends everything. Everybody loves food. How it's also changed Lily's life. That's coming up on Together. Ah, can't wait to see that one. Metro area libraries are coming together to help the homeless get off the streets. And for one of the dedicated workers, this mission is really personal. She's been in their shoes. She knows the struggles that come with being homeless. Melissa Garcia and photojournalist Eric Bloomer show us how she's doing what she can to help in this cycle for those who are lost. I just try to do good stuff, good choices. Trevor Miller is struggling with homelessness. Say, what can we do to work out something where I can not have to lose my possessions? Possibly uh, keep Trevor's stuff there another couple of days while Quica Montoya is working to get him off the streets and to find stable work. Quica per personally took me on her wing to, uh, to help me, you know what I mean? I've just been doing good ever since. One in a team of four peer navigators and four social workers employed full time at the Denver Public Library, Montoya loves her job advocating for this vulnerable population. I mean, there's other steps that we can take. Yeah. And she understands them better than most. I've definitely sat across from a couple people that I feel like I'm looking into a mirror of my past. A past where she struggled with homelessness and drug addiction. That's where the magic happens is when somebody comes in asking for help and needing resources, I can sit down and say, hey, I get it. Sitting down with customers she's identified as needing assistance, they take on one challenge at a time. The only normal is that there is not a normal. Denver Library's Chris Henning says navigators also train other staff how to better serve. They are here to make connections with customers and help them better help themselves to work with the social service system. So that people like Miller can use the resources with a home to go back home to. That is just fantastic. Thanks, Melissa. A Breckenridge company is honoring their late founder by coming together for Colorado. Breckenridge Grand Vacations has raised hundreds of thousands of dollars to add more defibrillators or AEDs all across Summit County. If you're having a heart attack, these devices are life saving. The company started this campaign to honor and in memory of founder Rob Millisor. In 2015, he lost his life to a heart attack. It has been um, an initiative to get um, awareness of AEDs throughout the community and to make sure that if somebody has a catastrophic event that uh, there's readily available treatment for a tragedy that could be prevented. And right now that CEO is working with the town council to identify the AEDs that are already in place and then find all those holes in coverage and make sure that everyone knows where to find one if they need one. 
Well, whether you've lived here a month or you're a native, you know Coloradans care about each other. And this next story, a stranger who works as a nurse stepped in when she heard about a little girl in liver failure. It was a year ago when she donated a part of her liver to eight-year-old Addie Hawks. Well, today, Addie now has a part of her heart, not physically, but emotionally. As Karen Morfitt shows us, thanks to her incredible gift, their lives have never been the same. <laughs> when you're eight years old, happiness is simple. It's like you're flying when it pulls you forward and you can't see the swing. Yep. Adeline Hawks loves to swing. She loves it even more when her good friend <laughs> Pam Acid is with her. She thinks it's a big deal for me. I don't think so. Diagnosed with a rare liver disease as a baby, Addie would need a transplant by age seven. <laughs> Pam, a nurse at Sky Ridge Medical Center, heard her story and offered to help. I am sure that anybody else would have done that that was, ended up being a match. It's just what you do. We met with them back then, shortly after their surgery. Dear Miss Pam, thank you for giving me a, a part of your liver. Today, they were back together with Addie's parents, celebrating a successful one-year checkup. You look back and you look at, you know, everything that she's gone through, you know, that you wish you could take away and and to see, you know, even though they're just numbers on a screen for lab numbers, they mean so much more. Nice. For the Hawks, it means Addie has her life back. She never had a lot of energy when she was sicker. Um, not like this. A life to do the things she loves with the people she loves. You go, Adeline. <laughs> I think you just smiled throughout that whole entire story. You can't help it. I did. I, I noticed you were too, so that's just a good giggle. thing. Yeah, Karen Warfa joins us now. We want to talk a little bit more about Pam and Addie because we just love their story so much. How did the two of them meet? Well, so it, they're Karen. actually complete strangers, okay. but... Um, Pam actually worked with Addie's uncle in the hospital, okay. and so she had heard that her uncle was going through mm -hmm. the testing himself, trying to figure out if maybe he could be a donor. Oh, fantastic. So she had never met Addie. Yeah, and then there you go. How has their relationship progressed now that Addie's getting so much stronger? So throughout the entire year that they were both kind of in recovery after their surgery, they would meet periodically about once every month, just for a lunch date, just Great. to see each other, just to uh, stay connected, and they're constantly texting, and they just have really grown from just liver transplant uh, patients into a family. You've spent so much time with them. Do you think they're always going to stay in each other's lives or do you think this is kind of fleeting and it's gonna move on? Uh, you know, I've met with them several, several times now mm -hmm. and each time I've asked them, do you think that this is gonna be something that a relationship that you nurture for a lifetime or is this something that, you know, with time will fade and both of them say they sure hope that they're gonna be in each other's lives for as long as they can, as long as she's welcome, Pam wants to be in Addie's life. Pam makes it sound so simple, um, but undoubtedly this has certainly changed her, I'm sure. Oh my gosh, you could see it just in that video from our first one. She was very shy, kind of, um, she was in recovery, so she didn't have that energy, right. but it was very apparent in that interview that Addie's doing really well. She um, doesn't have the medications that she had a yeah. year ago. She was on 14 different medications now. That's dropped down to about three, and her energy is just really developed. <laughs> Out of this world. <laughs> it was. It was amazing to see, and yeah. it was just really great because you could tell that each of them were doing good. Pam is also doing really well, and I think it just makes her feel better to see Addie have I'm her sure. childhood back. Yeah, for sure. Karen, thank you so much for introducing us to them. We just love them. Well, Denver's future sheriff's deputies are becoming yogis first. Why meditation has become such a big part of training and how yoga helps these first responders better serve everyone around them. Together with Karen Lee, sponsored by Canvas Credit Union. We're Canvas and we've got you covered, Colorado. Go live. Right? Well, if you've ever tried yoga or you're considering it, you've probably heard about how it can relieve stress and make you feel better. Well, now deputies in Denver are using it as a part of their training. The Sheriff's Department added yoga classes to the academy, but this isn't your typical vinyasa flow. These classes are specially tailored for first responders. They teach recruits how to deal with stress, maintain their composure, and enhance performance in the field. Now, at first, some were surprised by this unconventional class, but before long, they saw and started to feel the benefits both on and off the job. 
We love yoga. That's so fantastic. So glad they're getting to take part. Yes, I wish we had some newsroom yoga. I think <laughs> we that could would go use it, right? Well. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, we always love it whenever you share your photos for us. We uh, like to see you out and about enjoying our great state. And you're sending us so many of them. We appreciate it. And Lauren, I think you picked out some good ones. Yes, ski season. Obviously, we've had such great right. snow. And I love this picture. This is from Julie McKesson. They were visiting Steamboat Springs and taking full advantage of sledding up there on the snowmobiles. <laughs> I mean, that is some serious air there right. on that picture. It makes me a little nervous just I looking know, at it. But it's awesome looking, it is isn't it? awesome out there. And this is a look at their family as well. Again, doing oh. some tubing out there, which I love to do. It's so much fun. Looks like a great time. And Steamboat has had so much amazing snow. And I love this one, too. This is from Megan Florence enjoying Crested Butte. Beautiful couple there and uh, beautiful backdrop, too. I know. And you, just, you spent some time in Steamboat, so you get to enjoy that pretty snow. And that's why I can attest to how good the snow is up yeah. there because it has just been epic uh, with all the great powder. So if you're out skiing, tubing, snowshoeing, whatever you're doing, yes, send us pictures of you guys enjoying it. Yeah, we'll send them right here, and we will show them on together. So mm -hmm. please send them in. We appreciate you. You can also email us directly, too. Mm -hmm. Email Lauren or me as well. So Colorado Springs High School basketball player is sidelined because of a serious illness, but that it hasn't kept his friends from cheering him on. How they're coming together to show their support while he fights for his life at Children's Hospital. Coming up on this week's Together for Colorado Calendar, Monday, enjoy a special screening of The Princess Bride at the Sloan's Lake Alamo Draft House. 100% of the proceeds benefit the Denver Pro Corral. Tuesday, it's the Mile High Face Off at the Pepsi Center. The amateur hockey game raises money for disadvantaged children. Friday, enjoy some wine and chocolate and visions of love. The fundraiser benefits the Anchor Center for Blind Children. You can find out more information on these events by visiting the Together for Colorado section of cbsdenver.com. Well, students at Doherty High School in Colorado Springs are coming together to rally around someone they love. Schaefer Reichert came down with the flu. It then turned into strep and spread throughout his body, causing all kinds of problems. He has a life-threatening infection. While Schaefer recovers at Children's Hospital in Aurora, his teammates are sending him love and encouragement and keeping him top of mind. At their games, they've been wearing red shoes and armbands with Schaefer Strong written across them. Everyone's kind of stayed strong, and we just kind of come together, and we're like, we got to finish strong for Schaefer because that's what he would want. The good news, Schaefer's parents say he is on the road to recovery, and they're hopeful that he will be back to playing basketball soon. Well, one school district is coming together to make sure the kids are ready for more than just college. Cherry Creek Schools wants to arm students with technical and career skills as well. Those skills are badly needed in our growing economy. To make that happen, the district is building a brand new innovation campus. Well, we caught up with one student who is already taking advantage of the new opportunities. As Tori Mason explains, his dream is taking off. Got our landing lights, taxi lights. Most high school students are trying to pass gear, their gear. driving tests. Got the brakes, hydraulics. But Drake Robichaux is miles above the rest. So I was 17 and 41 days when I got my license. Drake spent his junior year at Grandview High with his head in the clouds. It lets you kind of get away from the troubles of life on the ground, if that makes sense. And he passed with flying colors. They have a aviation technology class, which is a full-fledged FAA ground school, and that gets you ready to t pass your FAA written test. Technical courses in Cherry Creek schools help students like Drake take off faster without sacrificing life on the ground. With it being a full year-long course, we didn't have to cram everything into a weekend, so I could do things I wanted to, like play lacrosse at the same time. But it wasn't easy. It took Drake hours of flying, studying, and an internship with Southwest to get here. While it may be a lot of work, it does pay off in the end. It, it really does. Drake's license only lets him fly these type of planes. But one day, you'll see him in the cockpit of your commercial flight. For now, he's just focused on college. Well, it's harder, the FAA test or the SAT? FAA. <laughs> Congratulations to you, Drake. Awesome job. Well, meanwhile, at Denver Public Schools, their Career Education Center is taking students out of the classroom and into the kitchen, where these kids are forming priceless relationships. Dominic Garcia decided to see what this was all about. We're going to make some biscuits today. 
You don't meet too many people like Chef Joe Rivera. Awesome. Then again, it's okay. he's never met anyone quite like Lily Cannon. Arr. It's hard for me to describe what she's done because I don't quite understand, right? Yeah, mix that all in. When Lily first walked into Chef Rivera's culinary class, she was shy, wouldn't even look people in the eye. But he had something to meet Lily's special need, food. Cooking is one of those things that just transcends everything. Everybody loves food. There you go. I approached teaching Lily like I would anybody. Anyway. It was all her, all her attitude, all her desire to learn that made her grow. Now, Lily isn't just cracking eggs, she's cracking jokes. Why did chicken cross the road, would you say? <laughs> Because he has the egg <laughs> She's excited about cooking every day. Lily's mom says this experience has changed her life. She tells me about it. First thing first is what she did, how much she accomplished today. Too much, huh? These two have formed a special bond, and while Chef Rivera has taught her the ins and outs of cooking, oh. he's not the only teacher in this kitchen. Working with Lily has really kind of shown me what teaching means. It, what it means to have an, a, a direct impact on somebody's life. Oh, to see those smiles. Well, you can taste some of Lily's creations at the Elliott Street Cafe. The restaurant is located right inside the Career Ed Center in the Highlands neighborhood. It is open to the public for lunch Tuesday through Friday. So mark your calendar. Well, rain, snow, or sleet, these women, they do not let anything keep them from coming together for Colorado. How they're using their hairstyling skills to give back to those around them. Our Together for Colorado stories are meant to show you a side of the community that you may not know about. You were telling us that you wanted more good news and we are delivering. It's all around us. We just have to open up our eyes and see it. Well, that's where these two hairstylists on the Western Slope come in. Once a month, they set up shop in a Grand Junction Park. Anyone who wants a haircut or a shave can have one for free. The stylists say this is about more than personal hygiene. It's about really seeing people and showing them that they do matter. Instead of complaining about the homeless, let's try to give them a leg up. Let's help them. Let's give them the tools that they need to become members of society in the way that they feel they should. Stylists say they've done as many as 35 free haircuts in one day, and they don't let bad weather stop them. If there's rain or snow, they just pull up to the local homeless shelters with their clippers and give haircuts there. Well, we all know how great a fresh haircut can feel. That's why students in the salon program at the Emily Griffith School are coming together to also offer free cuts. They recently stopped by a Denver middle school. It was a way for them to hone their skills, but it was also a way for the middle schoolers to get dolled up ahead of their winter formal. Look at that face. I love it. Kudos to everyone there involved. And thank you for joining us on Together. I look forward to seeing you next week as we have more powerful stories of how people are coming together for Colorado for each other. So please shoot me your ideas, most certainly your fun photos while you are out and about enjoying our great state. Until then, the stock show may be over, but we want to take you back to some of the fun. Photojournalist Tom Myers captured the excitement from these kids who are competing in the pedal tractor races. So enjoy.